all right students we want to make a statement of financial position and the question is 2018 past paper question boris boris is in the business as a sole trader the following balance are extracted from his books on 30th april 2018 now if the year, if the year is ending on april 18 then it must have been started on after april comes first may and first may previous year the year must have been started on first may 2017 now we have already highlighted few items because we have already used them while making an income statement but now we want to make a statement of financial position that is part b okay so let us prepare a statement of financial position my dear students statement of financial position is always made in three columns okay so we'll be starting with the heading the name of the owner then the statement of financial position then as at year of the uh, end of the year date now these three columns are just for presentation basically sofp is based on the accounting equation which says assets is equal to capital plus liability so we are going to start off with assets after assets we are going to write non-current assets and the three columns for non-current asset would state cost then accumulated depreciation in the third second column then net book value in the third column so let us see how many uh, non-current assets do Boris owns. Uh, as you can see, the premises is a non-current asset. Premises means uh, space or building. Okay, so the cost of the premises that we do have is 100,000. We are going to write the cost first. Then accumulated depreciation, also known as provision for depreciation. Now, as you can see, the premise depreciation is already given previously. That is 64,000 okay so this was the previous depreciation accumulated depreciation now what about this year's depreciation this year's depreciation we have already calculated in an income statement let us see how did we calculate it this year depreciation is being charged two percent using straight line so what we are going to do we we need to apply two percent on the original cost that is hundred thousand times two percent this will becomes two thousand okay so the 64 depreciation we had previously and 2000 for this year 64 plus 2 would become 66000 total depreciation would be 66 till date and if we deduct the accumulated depreciation from the cost of the non current asset we are left with the remaining value that is net book value okay after premises there becomes a uh, comes second item that is computer equipment okay so how much computer equipment we do have computer equipment dear cost is 40000 we also need to make sure uh, there aren't any adjustments relating to computer let us read this uh, is there any computer that we bought uh, recently that has not been recorded no i cannot find any other adjustment relating to computer so the cost would be again 40000 what about the accumulated depreciation as you can see in the computer the total provision that we do have is 15,000. Okay, 15,000 is the total depreciation till date. 15,000. And what about depreciation this year? As you can see in the notes, this year depreciation is being charged at 20% reducing balance. Now, you must remember while calculating depreciation using reducing balance, we need to apply the percentage not on the cost but instead on the net book value. And how do we calculate the net book value if we deduct the provision for depreciation from the original cost then we are left with the value that is net book value so what we are going to do we need to uh, deduct 15,000 from the 40,000 I am left with 25,000 let us see the calculation that we learned uh, while making an income statement cost is 40,000 and the previous year's depreciation was 15 the remaining value is net book value that is 25,000 and if we apply 20% to 25,000 this year's depreciation is 5,000 okay so previously we had a depreciation of 15,000 and this year further depreciation has been charged that is 5,000 so we need to add up both of these 15,000 previously and 5,000 this year 15 plus 5 this would become 20,000 okay so the total depreciation would be 20,000 so this total 20,000 would be written in accumulated depreciation column 15 plus 5 20. So out of this 40,000 computer uh, 20,000 has already been depreciated. If we deduct 20,000 from the original cost the remaining value that we are left with is 20,000.
Thirdly, we have another asset, a uh, non-current asset known as fixture and fitting. Now, as you can see, fixture and fitting cost is given that is 10,000. Okay, this is the original cost of fixture and fitting. What about the accumulated depreciation? As you can see, provision for depreciation at the start of the year is given 4,500. And what we need to do? So what about the depreciation this year, beta? Let us see uh, what is the depreciation method this year for fixtures. For fixtures, we have 10% depreciation on cost. So this means we need to apply 10% on the original cost. And what was the original cost, beta? Original cost was 10,000. So if we apply 10% on 10,000, this would become 1,000. Okay, so depreciation this year was 1,000 and previously we had a depreciation of 4,500. So 4,500 plus 1,000, this would become 5,500. Okay, 5,500. If I did a cumulative depreciation from the cost, uh, I'm left with net book value, that is the remaining value is net book value. Okay, so we are done with all the non-current assets. I do not need the total for the cost of non-current asset or provision for depreciation. I just need the total for NBV that is net book value. So what I need to do, I need to add up the NBV column and this is the total for non-current assets. Okay, after non-current asset would become comes current asset and in current asset, first of all, we are going to write the inventory that is closing inventory. Let us see the closing inventory is always given in the notes. We also discuss one more thing, uh, the double tick technique, if you remember, uh, all of these nodes should be used twice in the accounts. Okay, node one closing inventory. We already used it earlier while preparing an income statement. Now we need to use it again while preparing an SOFP statement of financial position. So the closing inventory figure, I'll be using it in the second column. And why I'm uh, writing it in the second column so that all of the items should be total from the second column and the final total should be taken over to the third column. But there is one thing that should be written in the first column and that is trade receivables. Why? Because trade receivables uh, needs to be deducted one more thing from the trade receivable and that is provision for doubtful debt. Now let us see how much our customers owe us at the end of the year. As you can see the trade receivables value that we do have is 37,400. So we also need to make sure are there any irrecoverable debt or not. Uh, yes, uh, as I can see in note number eight, trade receivable include a debt of 2400, which are considered irrecoverable. So what we need to do, we need to deduct the 2400 from the trade receivables and 37400 minus 2400, this would become 35,000. So uh, just remember that irrecoverable debt, also known as bad debt, should never be shown on the face of the SFP. They are deducted. Uh, before writing this figure okay so irrecoverable debt should be shown in the income statement and not in the sofp statement of financial position but the thing that is shown in the sofp is less provision for doubtful debt okay i need to apply the provision or doubt percentage on this uh, as you can see in note number eight the provision percentage is four percent i already used this four percent while making an income statement to see whether the provision increased during the year or decreased during the year. Okay. But in this case, I need to just apply 4%. I do not need the increase or decrease here. I just need to apply 4% on 35,000. That is 1400. Okay. <coughs> if I deduct 1400 from this trade receivable figure, I am left with uh, this amount of trade receivable that is 33,600. This is known as provision for doubtful debt. Okay, after trade receivables beta would come other receivable. Other receivables, uh, there are two things that basically come in other receivable. One is prepaid expense and another is accrued income. So let us see the notes. Are there any prepaid expense or accrued income? There is a prepaid expense uh, with advertising, with the name of advertising. Let us see this adjustment once more. Uh, we already learned how to do this while preparing an income statement. Advertising expense include 9,000 paid for a marketing campaign running from the beginning of March to the end of August. So therefore we paid 9,000 for how many months from March till August. Now let me count the number of months from March to August, March, April, May, June, July, August. So therefore basically this 9,000 uh, is a six month payment. Okay, 9,000 if I divide 9,000 by six months, 
from March till August that this becomes six months. So the monthly advertising campaign payment was how much was fifteen hundred. Now I I want to see uh, when did this year ends? Year is ending basically on April. So we paid for advertising for from March till August, and out of that two months, that is March and April, have already been utilized. Okay, March and April, we have already used the advertising. Okay, after April, how much is the prepaid? Okay, March, April, we do not need to include March and April because we have already used advertising expense in March and April. After April comes May, June, July, August. So basically, four months is prepaid. So if fifteen hundred, my dear students, is for each month, then the four months prepaid would be six thousand. Okay. So the extra amount that we have paid and that we haven't used this year would be a prepaid expense and would be shown as a current asset in the statement of financial position. Okay. The six thousand is a prepaid and it should should be shown as a current asset. After current assets, uh, after trade receivables, other receivables, there would come bank or cash. Now let us see: Are there any bank or cash transactions? As you can see in this list, bank is given as a debit balance. If the bank is a debit, then therefore it is a positive balance. It is an asset, and if instead the bank is written as a credit, then it is a bank overdraft. Therefore, it is a current liability. In this case, we have a positive bank balance, but are there any transaction that need to be done? Yes. In note number two, if you read it, purchase of good four thousand have been omitted from the books. This means we haven't recorded this transaction yet. The purchase was one thousand by check and three thousand on credit. Okay, when we bought the goods, we uh, we made the entry. Purchase account was debited, needs to be debited, and the payment debt was made by check. And because of this amount, the bank would be credited by how much? By one thousand and three thousand should be credited as a trade payables. Okay, but right now uh, I should worry about this bank and this bank account needs to be deducted by one thousand. Okay, so originally I have bank balance of four thousand. Out of this, one thousand was uh, basically paid. Now I am left with three thousand only. Okay, so I need to deduct this one thousand. So this is uh, basically the remaining balance. So what I need to do, beta, I need to add up all of these current assets. Now the total of current assets is sixty-five thousand one hundred. Okay, these are non-current. These are current assets. If I add up both of these, so the total would be total assets. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, अच्छा बेटा, after assets would comes capital and liability or equity and liability. As you may be aware that accounting equation states that assets should always equal capital and liabilities. So, how to uh, calculate capital in the statement of financial position? We are going to start with opening capital. Okay, in the question, uh, the capital that is already given is always opening capital, and the closing capital is never given. Closing capital needs to be found out. Okay, this is the capital that is given in the trial balance. So list of balance, it is always the opening capital. So after opening capital comes profit for the year, and we have, must have already calculated profit for the year. And as you can see, the profit for the year that we calculated in this question was fifteen thousand six hundred. So as you may be aware, that profit increases our capital. Therefore, we need to add up the profit for the year. And if instead was it was a loss, then the loss for the year needs to be deducted. Why? Because the loss decreases our capital. Then we have a drawings. So are there any drawings previously? Yes, we have a drawing of twenty thousand seven hundred that is already given. So are there any other adjustments in drawing? Let us see. Are there any other adjustment relating to drawing? Yes. In note number four, as you can see, during the year, Boris took goods for own use. So, beta, either we take out cash from the bank or either we take out goods from the business. These are all considered as drawing. So, this must also be added to the drawing account. So, the entry would become drawing would be debited and the purchase account would be credited in this part. Okay. So, drawing would be debited. So, the originally drawing that we have been given, we need to add up this forty five hundred drawing and the total drawing was twenty five thousand two hundred. Okay. Oh, uh, this is was a drawing that previously given, and we need to add up this. So the total drawing is this. Opening capital at profit for the year less drawing, and the remaining value is basically closing capital. 
so i do not need to write uh, label it as a closing capital as it's uh, understood if we start up with opening capital and add profit and subtract drawing then the closing value is always closing capital after assets and capital there remains liabilities there are two types of liabilities non-current liabilities and current liabilities now as you can see non-current liabilities are there any loans in the question yes as you can see the year is ending in 18 and we need to uh, pay the loan uh, in 2020 so this loan would be a non-current liability if instead the loan states uh, april 2019 or previous date then it the loan must be a current liability but in this case loan is a non-current liability so i also need to write the eight percent and 2020 these two things are important and if it only write bank loan and do not write 8% in 2020 examiner will not give you mark for this then after non-current liability there remains a current liability in current liability uh, the way we write trade receivables under current asset then the trade payable must be written in current liability now as you can see there is an adjustment also in trade payable uh, originally we have trade payable of 19,000 but the question has suggests that we have bought goods 4000 out of that 1000 was paid through check and 3000 was uh, worth of goods were bought on credit so if we have bought goods on credit therefore it will increase our trade payables okay so the total trade payable that we do have 19000 must be increased by 3000 now the total trade payable uh, that we owe total amount that we owe to our suppliers is 22000 okay uh, <laughs> we write other receivables after trade receivable similarly we write other payables after trade payables and how much other payables that we do have in other payables there can be basically two things uh, there can be a uh, accrued expense or it can be a prepaid income prepaid income is a bit rare so normally we write accrued expense here now are there any accrued expenses as you can see we have already used advertising so just uh, let me put the double tick in that and three month bank loan interest is due yes this loan interest beta three months is due so therefore it should be written as a current liability and how much loan we do have loan is sixty thousand if i apply uh eight percent to sixty thousand sixty thousand times eight percent so the total year interest is forty eight hundred out of this only three months is due so basically loan interest that is due is 1200 for three months okay if i apply eight percent to sixty thousand this would become total 4800 out of this three month interest is due okay so this is trade payables and these are all current liabilities so assets always equal capital and liabilities so accounting equation beta basically states that assets is equal to capital liability as you can see total assets should always equal with capital liability and if it matches therefore we can say that our sofp or balance sheet is balanced okay